A lot of people ask me how to update Docker containers. Now, let me tell you, updating Docker containers is easy process and almost as easy as starting a new container. Now, in this video, I will show you what is the easiest way to update any Docker container in less than five minutes. Also, if you are new to the Docker containers and Docker engine, make sure you check the older video on how to install Docker engine on Windows and Linux environment. I will leave the link up in the info cards. Let's get started. Now we're gonna use the buy whole container we started before to update in this case. We have a few updates available for multiple components of this application. As you see in the footer of the application, we can see the updates to the system. We can also see the change log over at GitHub. So now I know for sure that all the components in the application need to be updated. So I'm going to go ahead and log into my server where the Docker engine is running. Now I want to start by looking into which container images are available on the system using the Docker image list. We see here that PyHole is showing with the latest tag, but we know for sure there is an update for this. So the way we obtain the newer image of any application, we have to do another Docker ball command. I want to do sudo docker pull and I want to put the same image name that I see in the image list. As you see, the system found another newer image. Now trying to download it. And you can see in here, it says downloaded newer image for buy hole with the latest tag. Now, if we go back to the image list, we'll see the newer image that got downloaded. We also see the older image now showing none in the tag which means the older image is no longer identified as the latest. So now we have two versions for the buy whole image and we need to move our application to the newer version. Now I want to use the docker ps command to check which containers are running right now. We see in here that the buy whole is using the old image ID. So it's still using the older version. Now in order for us to update any container, we have to tear down the old container and start it from the beginning. This can be done using the docker run command or a docker compose command also as we experimented before and we have to start a newer container using the newer image we just got using the docker pole. I use docker compose in this example for the pie hole and I remember I had the yaml file in the system that contains all the instructions to start a container for pie hole with all the configuration. So I want to use a very useful command called locate to find this YAML file because it has been a while and I don't remember exactly where I saved it. So I want to do the sudo update database which basically indexes the whole file system and knows where every file is located. Then I'm just going to do locate by hold.yaml. This is the instruction file. And I see right now the location for my YAML file. So let's use a text editor to make sure our configuration inside is correct. You can see in here the two most important pieces of information is the board mapping. And it's using the same boards as we are using right now. So this part is correct. The second part is the volumes. And the volumes contain all the data that the application have. The logs, the configuration, the add list, anything that we configure specifically in the container, it will be in the volume. And as you've seen before in the persistent volumes video, I'll also leave the link in the info cards in the top. Persistent volumes are consistent across Docker container updates. So as long as we are using the same volume names in the original YAML file, we should contain all the configuration and customization for the application after we start the container again from scratch. So now we verify the YAML file look correct. Now, in order for us to start a container again, we have to stop and remove the old container first. For this, we're going to use the docker ps to confirm the buy whole container name or the container ID. You can use either parameter to update and stop containers. So first, we're going to stop the container using sudo docker stop and then the container name or the ID. The system will say the container name to confirm. So now we just need to use docker rm to completely delete this container. Now I just need to go back to this directory where the YAML file is located. 
and then we're gonna start our docker compose utility if you haven't seen the docker compose video make sure you check it out docker compose is a very useful infrastructure as a code utility that allow you to start services directly from an instruction file in a yaml extension very similar to xml and it's basically the file that i had open that contain all the board mapping all the services all the container names and for this the docker compose command is very easy to construct we're just gonna define the file name right now we are in the same directory so i'm just gonna define the pyhole.yaml file i'm gonna use up to start the container the opposite for this obviously is down which brings down the container and dash d make sure this is in detach mode that means the container will not show you all the terminal output in this specific SSH session, but it will start in the background and will keep working. Finally, once the system says done, now we can verify Docker PS. Our container is back again. And if we refresh our pyhole GUI, right now the container is still starting, but once it's loaded, we can see the pyhole version in the bottom is been updated and also our data is still as is because we are using persistent volumes now the last tip i like to do to save my storage is to do a cleanup i want to go to docker image list and i want to look into the old image id and i want to remove it to save this space as we no longer use this image it's safe to remove it from the desk so i want to use the sudo docker image remove and then include the id for the image now if we do the docker image list, we only have by hole with the latest tag. Now I want to repeat the process one more time because we are running redundancy of course. Redundancy is very important. I want to go to my secondary by hole server. I want to do the same process just to show you quickly how easy it is to update the docker container. I want to log into my second server. And now let me go into the sudo docker ps to confirm the running container as you see the by hole container is running and i'm also looking into the image list i see the same the by hole with the latest tag for the old image so i want to pull the newer image first using the docker pull by hole once this is done it says download the newer image now i can confirm my image list contain the newer version and older version is also showing none in the tag version so now we can stop our secondary by whole container on our secondary server and finally we can also do docker rm to remove the secondary container now let's change directory to our yaml file directory I confirm here the by hold that YAML is here as well. So I'm gonna use the docker compose command again sudo docker compose dash f by hold that YAML is the file name up to start the container dash d to start it detach. Once the container is created, we can confirm it's up using the docker ps. And the GUI, once we update it, now we are running the newer version also keeping all our data across the container updates using persistent volumes. Now finally to the cleanup, I want to go to my image list and I want to pick up the image ID for the older image. I want to remove it from the system to save this space. And now image list showing only the latest version. That's how easy it is to update Docker containers and the newer version of your application. Thank you for watching.